welcome to Inbound After Hours. Uh, I've got myself, Paul, and just Ricky. Yeah, just the two of us today. Um, the others are Andrew's off, he's on leave. Christmas shopping. So much earned rest, I think, getting yeah. dragged around the shops. <laughs> uh, and Mark is building some Marcelo stuff, I think. Yeah, doing some uh, process and project management work, so unfortunately he can't join us. So, Ricky and I are going to take this one today, yeah. How are you doing? You alright? Yeah, great. Looking forward to the Christmas break. I know people yeah. will be listening after Christmas, but we're looking down to uh, we're looking down to looking forward to getting some downtime over Christmas. Yeah, a couple of days away. So we're breaking up in a couple of days. We've yeah. got a Christmas party on Friday in the office. Yeah, I can't wait for that. It should be uh, it's the first time we've done it in the office to start <laughs> with. So it should be I think interesting. We've got a full bar downstairs to take, make use of, but yeah. we're having. The party in the office. I saw bottles of vodka <laughs> come in the other day yeah. in the bottle load, so mm. it's uh, set the tone for what it's going to be. So don't expect uh, any useful work out of us Friday afternoon. No, definitely <laughs> not. I think, yeah, officially shut. Uh, so we've had a think. We're going to, with today's topic for this week, this episode of Inbound After Hours, we're going to look at content, inbound blogging. Mm. And the theme today is what should an inbound blog be? Mm. Um, so we'll talk about what to what to include, what to look at, and where we started was what it's not. Yeah. And uh, you made a good point, Ricky, about what you come across is a common blogging pitfall, really. Mm-hmm. You write on a lot of sales pictures, don't you? And, yeah. Um, selling the business to clients, and a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of clients haven't done any inbound yet. No. A lot are doing blogging. Yeah. And you've found some common stuff to look out for. Yeah, basically, if people haven't got into... The concept of inbound yet but they've been told they need to blog i think the trap they fall into one or two traps they talk about themselves a lot mm. so how's little johnny's apprentice doing it was susan's birthday we <laughs> bought new equipment it's a, it's about them yeah and the unfortunate truth is no one gives a shit really <laughs> uh, which is harsh but unless you put the groundwork in to build up that value you haven't mm. really earned the time of day with with prospects maybe current customers care maybe suppliers mm. care so he could do it from that perspective but if you're focused on new traffic new business then talking about yourself isn't going to go too far why yeah why would a new a new browser to your website who, yeah. who looks on your blog care that it's someone's birthday or something like that no um a prospect might mm. are you building a relationship yeah maybe? if you're getting right to the bottom of the funnel maybe mm. yeah there's, there's a possibility but for attracting new customers yeah nobody's nobody's going to be that that, that interested in this so nobody's going to be searching no for anything like that and that, no. that's the root of what we got to planning what goes in an inbound blog what should an inbound blog be mm. um and then it all starts with the keyword doesn't it of what it needs to be it needs to be centered on a keyword yeah um, you need to know what channel you're using it for. So the vast majority of people blog for SEO benefit mm. to drive traffic from search. So if you're going to do that, you need a keyword you're trying to attract or at least a, a key theme. I know with a lot of longer tail keywords, there's not that many type in that exact phrase, but you'll be the closest match on a lot of very similar long tail phrases. Mm. So it's having a good, a good keyword to be a backbone and then you'll attract the similar theme keywords around it. That's what we do say, I don't know, 90% of our blogs are aimed that way. There's also those other blogs that you'll probably want to just aim at the persona pain point in general. So maybe no one searches it, but you know it's a real struggle for your pain, for your persona. Then that could be really useful when you do your email roundups mm. or you're putting out new social channels, not necessarily for search, but nine times out of ten you've got to find a keyword to put it around you can marry the two together it can be a pain point and a search term definitely. yeah and then we were talking today just in a meeting earlier with um somebody who's planning a third, one of their first campaigns for their new client um they've had campaigns in the past but it's the first time he's planned one for this campaign so we were looking at old titles you know we can always revisit another title because the mm. keywords that you pick for your inbound titles, you'd like them all to bite and resonate and get yeah. good traffic. But obviously, some some get more than others, and then right. then when the algorithm kicks in and it climbs up the rankings, you can actually get more more views on that particular blog. Yeah, if you go so, retrospectively, 
up, upscale it. Yeah, so when you've got that keyword right, like that, mm. then you can really see the success. And then the beauty of it being centered around a keyword is if you know the pain points right, yeah. and the keyword isn't bringing in the traffic that you need, you can always switch that keyword as well in, re- in retrospect. That's yeah. the word I'm after. So you Definitely. can go back and look at it, can't you, and change the keyword, tweak the title well, around a, a new keyword. That's a tactic that a lot of people miss. It's just posting out new blogs, which is great. You need to, you need to keep that going, but... There's so much value in old mm. old blogs. If you look at stats, I think HubSpot released them recently. Um, the overwhelming majority of their traffic comes from blogs that are over two years old. And I think when you look at our blog, probably similar theme. Mm. We've got a few that have done well in the last sort of released nine months ago. But they're generally older blogs because they've had time to rank in Google. Google knows they're going to stay there and they're a good answer. People have managed to link to them. All of those things have come with time. And when you look at the, when you do your analysis on Google, when choosing your titles, if you look at some of your keywords, eight out of 10 on page one will be from 2014 or earlier. Yeah. A lot from 2012 as well. Mm. Like, don't what the, what's the gap there? Like five years, I guess. Yeah. Five years ten, seems to be the cemented on spot one. Yeah. Like page one, sorry. No, definitely. Um, and then the ones that are at top three spots on yeah. page one, they're also updated. Yeah, so the five-year-old to... ones that get updated once a year mm. at least or something like that. It's... Published date of 2013 or 2012 yeah. and amends every, yeah. every year or whatever. No, it's a good tactic. It's a clever tactic, isn't it? Because... All the other thing to talk about what an inbound blog should be is it should probably be evergreen. Mm. So that's a, they're not necessarily, and this is another pitfall that I see people go wrong is writing about the news, like what's happening today. And while that can be a good tactic for, again, email and yeah. social and stuff, the search volume is generally low or it's very high and then gone. Yeah. Um, so for us an inbound blog should be evergreen it should be a problem that's consistent over a number of years um, when, when this comes up then when because um, I don't want many pictures in my role with us so when this comes up when you're chatting to a client and you're talking about what the purpose of it is and someone might have asked these questions what is an inbound blog what would you say to someone then who say well I've only got one blog a week to play with so how do we get around this? Because there's timely stuff that might be useful for social. Yeah. But we want stuff that's going to be there in the future. Well, I guess ultimately a lot of where we see the ROI is in is in the long term gain. Mm. So we, if you've only got one blog a week, I'd make them all evergreen. I'd forget the the timely stuff unless it's really pertinent or mm. important in your industry. People aren't necessarily come to companies or brands for news there's, there's sites that do news better than you there's sites that will release it the minute the story breaks yeah. and people who are set up for it really <coughs> so they'll have places they go to for the news they're coming to you for value and that's the main thing you you're as a company you've got a unique stance a unique value proposition and that's why they're with you they're not there because you're a news company I think if you can do a bit of it, great. But if you're stuck with what I've got many priorities, the priority is always evergreen for me. And that, that brings us nicely to what we thought was the ultimate aim of what makes a blog mm. inbound, and that's offer value yep. and give the persona value to so, what they want value for. So yep. whether that's a search query of how to do a particular thing yep. or what should I be looking at for this or yep. ideas for X. Um, if you offer that value... And it's going to be, it's going to do all the right things in Google's eyes yeah. because the users are going to appreciate it, aren't they? Yeah. So that's going to climb your SEO benefits. And then if you're offering value, they're going to, they're going to trust you and reward you for it. You know, wouldn't you for a click through on? Definitely, you're playing the long term game like anything. You put, you put value out. Next time they've got a challenge, and they see you in the search results, they're much mm. um, more likely to click you. So it's going to increase your click through rate. They'll recognise your brand. And when they come to buy in that arena, you've got a, a head up on the other competition. Even if, even if they haven't gone through, which we'll talk about in a minute, the, the sort of inbound process from a blog, even if they don't click the CTA and download the guide, you've still built up some sort of brand authority and recognition with the customer by yeah. adding them value. And definitely. I think that's definitely the, my biggest pet peeve with blogs is that it doesn't answer the question or I, or I read it and I don't know how to do what it said to do. Yes. So if it's a step-by-step guide to 
using Snapchat and I read it and I can't use Snapchat at the end, which is the case. Um, that's that's the most annoying thing for me. So, I mean, first and foremost, yeah, add value to the user, make it really worth their while reading. But a yeah. quick checklist, if you want someone to quality control your blogs, the first thing is, does it say what it what it's supposed to do? Does it answer the question? Can a user do what they're supposed to do off the back of reading that blog? Two things that made me think of. One was one of our early podcasts. We talked about social media. Mm -hmm. And I think you said by this time next year, your mum will be on Snapchat. (laughs) Is your mum on Snapchat? My mum is not on Snapchat. (laughs) Are you back on Snapchat? She came on Instagram. Mm. I noticed because when you're on Facebook and someone joins from your Facebook uh, community, the... um, it tells you, but she's on Instagram. I think Instagram is just from where we were when we recorded the first podcast mm. nine months or so ago. I think Instagram's just grown much bigger than I thought it Facebook would. Facebook ad spend, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. that link to have product yeah. spending on uh, companies spending showing their products on Instagram. Yeah, you can link through to the product pages. They've just monetized it. It they? is. And it's it's just a huge community now. I was looking the other day. If you look at true social networks, so taking out things like. Um, um, YouTube yeah. and the messenger apps and stuff that closed ones yeah, yeah closed ones if you take those out open ones Facebook's obviously overwhelmingly the most popular but then Instagram mm. massively ahead of everything else in second place like I think it had six times the user base of LinkedIn three times the user base of Twitter and on, it was about uh, it was only a th- a th- it had about 40% of uh, Facebook so it's huge. It's yeah. amazing what they've done because it's changed from what it originally was, yeah. which is a community of community of iPhone, yeah, photography, yeah, fans, yeah. Definitely. And you could get to know people a little bit because yeah. it was small enough to follow someone with even a few hundred thousand followers yeah. in America or Australia, definitely. And they'd appreciate you liking their photos. Yeah, yeah. It's just a completely different beast now. It it's happened in about nine months. It has. It's crazy. And I think they've been clever enough to. Coming back to the question about Snapchat, mm. they've just ripped the rug from underneath yeah. them. Um, Instagram stories just takes away the USP of Snapchat, really, yeah. without the complication of how to use it. So much simpler. It's just, yeah, easy. I get it. Snapchat, I kind of get it, but I don't understand why it's that complicated. They've took what Snapchat's USP was and made it popular yeah. and made it easier. Yeah. You can't fail doing that, can Exactly. You? And Facebook... They've been doing that for years on their own platform. Obviously, mm. now they're just doing it on Instagram. And that um, product line they built up with Men- uh, Messenger and with, uh, what's the other one? I don't use it, WhatsApp, yeah. that they own as well. They're just cleaning up, like, if you look at that. Yeah. I remember there was, I think it was at Partner Day at Inbound, um, the top, they showed the top 18 mm. social media apps in the world. If you discount the, the one in China... Um, that's called we, like WeChat. Or WeChat, something, something yeah. that they use. Just it's a lifestyle yeah. tool. But so discount that one because of the numbers, and yeah. it's not used anywhere else. Out of the top eighteen, Facebook actually owns something like fourteen or fifteen <laughs> yeah. of them. It's insane. Um, it's got such a dominance. <laughs> but if you look at everything online, if you if you appeased Facebook and all of its properties, and Google and mm. all of its properties, so Google and YouTube. You do all right. Yeah. You wouldn't really notice the rest if you if they weren't there. Yeah. So back back to the blogging then. Mm. With Sorry, yeah. The, yeah. Social <laughs> chat in the middle of that. The uh, yeah, I just wanted to know if your mum were on Snapchat. <laughs> no, no, um, not yet. I'll update you when she's <laughs> <laughs> the the blog. Yeah, peas in Google is what made me think we're actually meant to be talking about blogs. Mm. So if you do all the SEO stuff, you offer the value. Yeah. Your user's going to have a better journey. Yeah. And like Rand said when we met him. And he was on the podcast. Mm-hmm. He said, "Am I going to do what you know somebody who's been successful at blogging tells me to do, or yeah. am I going to listen to Google?" We've said, "No, we've changed the rules. Yeah. User experience above all else. Yeah. Just do the right content that the user wants for that search query, exactly. and our algorithm, our rank brain, our yeah. AI will work out that yours is the best answer." Definitely. And we've switched to that. Uh, we've had a chat with. Uh, Raza in the team here who joined us from a journalist website yeah. um, their tactic wasn't inbound blogging it was sports event blogging it's timely stuff on that timely very quickly live blogging events stuff like yeah. that and uh, 
he's got some old habits that die hard. He'll be the first to say that. Yeah. And their goal was keep you on the page, put the mm. answer at the bottom. Because it'll be reven- ad revenue driven, yeah. which is based on impressions and time on the page and all that yeah. stuff. And he said, <clears throat> no matter what the answer is, put it at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The main point of your post, put it at the end. Just get yeah. them to scroll to the bottom because it'll have those banners, yeah. And you spoke to another agency. Yeah, another recently. agency, you yeah. said that as well, which was surprising. Yeah, we were just chatting and we got just talking about tactics and uh, the in- another inbound tactic that we don't employ, um, but just thought it was interesting, was to offer a little bit of the value to the question at the top, but then go into the whys and the conceptual explanation and then offer the main value at the bottom of the yeah. post so that thinking being that the user has then read and spent, invested a minute yeah. scrolling through and found it and then they've been had time on your page and yeah. they're at the bottom of your blog post, which we used to do, but we kind of moved away from that. No, I agree. Um, it's, it's not a good tactic in my opinion. It's why don't you just make the full blog good value for the user rather than having this value yeah. at the start, a bit of woolly backgroundy stuff that you might be relevant yeah but most people probably not I don't know maybe but then at the end the real value I'd no just be pissed to off I'd, I would yeah, yeah I'd go right well no I'm not clicking that at the bottom yeah waste my time a bit yeah um, so, what, so particularly what, if it's obvious yeah so what we what what we've what we've started doing over the past few months is offer value up top yeah first and foremost and uh question that, that, that he had when I was talking about it was what what about bounce rate why don't people just yeah leave as soon as you got the answer there's very few questions in life but in <laughs> blogging that can be answered in a paragraph like if you blog tactics how tall is Donald Trump like you've got an answer mm. there's probably not much else you can say about it so Google's going to take those type of queries put them in the results box you don't even need to click you but most things you can't just answer like that. Okay, you can give them. So we've got a blog which is um, how much does PPC cost? Mm. Okay, we we can tell you it's whatever it is, one pound thirty on average in the UK. Whatever it is, the answers there in the first paragraph. Well, that's not the answer for you by any means. It's going to be what might be if you're writing an essay in yeah, college exactly. and need the average cost. Yeah, fine. That's it, and you've got what you need move on your way but the real you anyway yeah exactly convert, but the real persona's got to know it's dependent on your location yeah. your industry what your budget is what your goals are and then you can talk about all that which actually really answers what their their real question is what they're trying mm. to achieve with that question i think that's the same for most blogs is okay there's a there's a quick answer but the values in what you what you're actually trying to solve yeah. and if you can talk about that you're adding value all the way through. They're going to get to the end. Obviously, you might want to convert them. Um, and then you've done both. You've kept them on without yeah. having that grey area in the middle. You've just added value all the way through. Skill can come as well in another thing that we've we've put on our list of what should an inbound blog be. It needs, it needs to be a, a decent read or at least mm. pleasant to read. We've just had a call with a client who works in a, by their, by their words, a, a dull, uninteresting industry. Um, but you know, they said it's a, it's it's our job to make it worthwhile reading. Yeah. So, if you can do that by offering value, answering the question, and then kind of go in, if if the answer is yes, but it's not quite that simple. Yeah. Here's why. Yeah. And then looking in and sort of giving knowledge is gonna sort of entertain along the way, isn't yeah. it? Doesn't have to be. You know, it's not a story in terms of a cliffhanger no. and yeah. twists and turns, but just you're giving value is is entertainment in itself. Yeah. It's rewarding you. Definitely. It's one form of, of making it an entertaining read. Yeah. So if you can do that through through um, throughout the rest of the piece after the simple answer up top. Yeah. We, I mean, the stats are there. It does it does convert more. Yeah. And more quality leads is what I mean. Yeah. So if the answers. Sense. Oh, if the answer is just simple and you only need the simple version, yeah. you're not ready to convert anyway, so you're not actually losing anything. Yeah, and if you look at these sort of things we mentioned so far, they're not secret inbound marketing tactics. No. So answering the blog question, making it enjoyable to read, probably the two most important in that order, really. Um, the only one is put the answer up top. Yeah, yeah exactly. And there are some tactics like... 
Uh, we're going to talk about like making the blog skimmable to read because realize that most people don't read a thousand words. Especially so, if you've just read the answer in the first two sentences. Yeah, exactly. You're going to say, you're going to think, well, why is my scroll bar this big? Yeah, yeah. What else has it got? Oh, exactly. that subheading looks all right. So yeah, exactly. We, we always um, kind of put uh, subheadings with mm. anchor text links so they can jump to the subheading. So if you're back to the PPC blog, if you know what the average is, but then we, we've got a subheading that says... Uh, check this out in the retail industry you can click retail and jump to your bid straight away i yeah. think that's a it's a good tactic but again all all about the user it's not really about inbound it's about making the, the experience better for the user and their technical seo features google for google's benefit they used to be there bullets numbers prioritizing information Definitely. but google now reads like a user does yeah. so if you put an anchor link in to a particular subhead in make a point and then offer a back to the top link yeah the spider will as well yeah and exactly so you could actually rank for that part of the mm. page as the answer to the question but the most important bit for why we do that from a search viewpoint is to get in the mm. rich snippets or the answer box or whatever you want to call them the vast majority of those answer boxes are list based or bullet point based so it's yeah. how do i do this how do i cook that it'll just it'll give you the quick overview steps and a lot of people don't like Google doing that, like taking their content and giving it to them. But again, most things can't be answered with five bullets. Someone can think, ah, this is the right thing for me. Yeah. I'll click the link, then I've got to go in these subheadings and read all the separate paragraphs or all the steps. So you're going to get the overwhelming majority of traffic. And we've seen that whenever we get in those boxes. Yeah. The blog just goes through the roof. So we drop that on all of our blogs. The, the primary aim is to get in that. Yeah. I mean, we had a client get it in the first campaign and the numbers shoot right up. Yeah. So then you've got something to work with then. Yeah. Then you can do a specific CTA for a specific blog. download. And yeah, then, exactly. then you'll see the conversions. Yeah, or move the CTA around and it's have an a idea play for their it. next campaign, actually. Yeah. Whether it should just be for that one blog. Yeah. Well, we idea. did it for another client recently. Um, change the CTA from the bottom of the page to like a layover one. So mm. instead of having to scroll to the bottom of the page, it's a long blog. Um, it cuts off halfway through, um, so if it's 50 tips for doing something, we give them 20 and say, do you want the rest? And your email here, and then it opens it. Top of the funnel level, just yeah. give us your email, that's all. Yeah, and that's all we ask for, and it's it's a good way of capturing it, but we wouldn't have ever done that and invested the development time if it didn't already have that traffic. That brings us back to the revisiting them point as well, because mm -hmm. that blog was built up over time. Mm -hmm. started with... 10 tips you know, or something. We, we get yeah. to... We, we, Paid for a couple of hours yeah. at work for the first draft, so um, that's how long got put into it. It got yeah. up to 20, it did all right, yeah. upped it to 40, exactly. then 60. And just keep going. And then, yeah, get those wheels turning, algorithms, get them in your favour. Yeah. Um, word count. Mm. Word count, what do you reckon? My opinion on word count is it takes what it takes to write the blog, mm. and there's. <laughs> It's kind of two contrary pieces of advice, really. There's that, because that's what I want as a user. There's a search engine side of it that, unfortunately, pretty much says as long as possible, mm -hmm. because there's a huge correlation between the longest blogs and the rankings. Um, is, even though they say, put user experience yeah, first. It's tricky, but I guess, I guess what they're looking for with all the changes in Google recently in terms of their... Uh, trying to make the word uh, search engine understand semantics, trying to make them understand themes and topics and authority on a topic rather than just keyword based. I think it ties into that, like it's saying, okay, we don't want users to click on a link and pogo stick back to results and have to find other ones. We want people to click on a link and get their problem mm. solved first time. That's Google's aim. If you've got more content, I guess Google's theory is you've got a much higher likelihood of answering the question fully and probably answering the other questions yeah. around it. Kind of the argument we've, we've talked about recently with pillar pages and things, which we'll, we'll go into in more detail on another show. But um, I guess that's where the correlation comes from. It's can we, um, can we answer all the other questions on that page? So something to think about when you're blogging mm. is, I've answered what I set out to answer. Are there some very closely related other yeah, things that if you were in that user's shoes you'd want to answer as well and that's a good way to extend the blog length without just overwriting because 
Again, another pet peeve is waffle. Like yeah. no one likes waffle. It's just there for nobody. Nobody reads it. No one reads it. So and that harms you in the long run anyway, because mm-hmm. the more people people will bounce. Then yeah, if you've got to read through waffle to find an answer, yeah, they're going to bounce. They are. And if you do what we were saying a minute ago and go for length with your mm. post with yeah. relevant content, yeah, in the area related to the topic, probing and developing questions. Yeah that are relevant to the reader's initial search term, yeah. they're going to be on your page longer, so that's good. But if it's a short answer in the first place, answer it quickly at the top, yeah. and then you've catered for them anyway. Mm-hmm. So you don't, you, even if it's a short answer, and the short answer is yeah. a short blog, yeah. you can still, you can, when you've got the time, you yeah. can still add the depth behind it, can't you? Exactly. There's some blogs that you just can't write 2,000 words no. for. It just doesn't end it. How tall is Donald Trump? Six foot three. What else can we do? Probably say, how does that rank against previous presidents? Or how is that against the Using that analogy, if you're looking up for, if you're Googling Donald Trump's height, mm. how tall is Donald Trump for the purpose on yeah. that analogy of yeah. where he sits in all the world leaders? Yeah. Well, give them all the other world leaders on yeah, that blog. Exactly. And they don't need to go anywhere else and Google how tall is Theresa May. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you could, so you could do that. You could give them like the average height of a man to compare yeah. against. <laughs> I don't know why people would be Googling how tall is Donald Trump, but I did see it as an example on something I read but, the other day, so it's in my head. So yeah, so, but even if you answered all of the subsidiary questions of how tall is, like all the scenarios you can envisage why someone would search it, it's still going to be a four or five hundred word. It's not a lengthy blog no. anyway. Um, so there's just going to be those scenarios where you just write to the piece. Yeah. Think about those other questions which could lengthen it. Um, but sometimes writing to the piece is 200 words. Sometimes it's, we've got blog six and a half thousand mm. words. On average, I don't know, it's hard to put an average on a thousand-ish. Yeah, I think we're averaging at the minute with the type of search queries we've been doing this week, about 800 to 1200, yeah. is typical. I'd say so. And then, but the thing is, a, a, a proper long tail keyword for an inbound audience mm. who's in research mode, typically B2B or some sort of long form purchase is going to be quite pricey. Yeah. Um, you're going to, they, they want the time to read anyway, so it's naturally going to have a topic that yeah. lends itself to a yeah. higher number of words. And that's a good point. There's, there's more factors than just the digital marketing side. There's all of the context from. It, what you, what have you got? How complex is your solution? Mm. If it's like a, a technology or an in, uh, an engineering question, you might have to be quite lengthy versus something more B two C. If you've got long sales cycles, so to really consider purchase, mm. maybe it needs to be longer. So there's a lot of other and your persona. Mm. How um, is your persona like a real researcher? Do they need to get to the bottom of that question, or are they more? Um, skimming people. There's, there's all these sorts of questions that you, are unknowns, but that's you've got to me, take into account. Let me think of another big thing that you need in an inbound blog. The stuff that you offer into your persona should be actionable. Mm. So the knowledge needs to either move them on yeah. to do the next phase of their research oh. journey yeah. or give them some advice to put into action. Definitely. Either way, after reading that piece, they need to have moved on a step. Yeah. No, 100% agree with that. It's like a lot of the stuff we write at the top of the funnel isn't necessarily anything about inbound or HubSpot even. It's um, <clears throat> how how do I do better marketing is even quite low for us. Mm. And if it was that, we would talk about PR and um, print and all of the other things that are possibilities. Inbound's one of them. Mm. But we need to give them the value, even if they don't want to go with inbound, um, give them the argument for and against. And I think... I think that's another good tip is just be honest. Like, be, if we're doing a review of HubSpot, HubSpot's not 100% perfect. Mm. If you're um, Amazon, you don't want to buy HubSpot, it's not right for you. Yeah. If you're um, Tea Cake Sandwich Shop, you don't want to buy HubSpot. Like, be honest about who it is and isn't for. Mm. At the end of the day, if you sit and write a blog and say it's perfect for everyone, two things are going to happen. You're going to lose trust. Yeah. Or worst case is they call you to buy it and waste everyone's time in the sales process, get to the end, it's too expensive yep. for them, or unsuitable. So I guess just be honest, everything's got its place, and be honest about what that is. That's what I, um, when I joined, and came into the inbound mm. movement, 
that's that's the that's the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah. Offer value and be honest yeah. with folk, and then you won't go far wrong. <laughs> no, it's it. I mean, like I say, when you recap the things we're suggesting to do, it's so simple, isn't it? Mm. Answer questions, give value, think about the user. Like none of these are advanced tactics we're saying to do. It's. it's just How that many then? Focused. I'm going to use my stat now. Mm. How many of the blogs that are written? And there is, per day, 1.97 million blogs written. Wow. Just on WordPress. Okay. (laughs) So So, you're doubling that on everything else probably, aren't you? Just under 60 million posts a month. Across everything. Blog posts are written. Wow. How many of them a day do you reckon uh, Meet these rules. Meet these rules. I don't know the answer about it. <laughs> That'd be awesome if you did. <laughs> uh, God, 0.01, t- tiny amount, I, I think. Um, so like we said, when we when we picked this topic earlier this week, I said, I want to mention that we've hit peak content mm. and it's very noisy out there. Yeah. But fucking hell, it's not. Because even though there's 60 million posts a month, yeah, you read so much stuff that isn't doing these things to help people on a user journey on a buyer journey yeah and um, so I can't remember, I've, I've seen another start I didn't research it today unfortunately so I can't remember but I think it's like the average user reads somewhere about four blogs a day an average yeah. person and ask, ask, ask your mates do they well, most people do say no blogs? I don't, don't do that blogs, no technically oh, you're a blogger yeah, yeah. well yeah as soon as <coughs> you, you google, google anything they, that's the answer that's coming up mm. and I don't think people realise that but you read so many blogs a day mm. so it's it is noisy out there. Depending on your industry, will will vary how many people are doing a good job or not. Um, but okay, and if you if you can just add the best value to the user in that marketplace, it doesn't matter. No, other people won't be assured. We've worked in a lot of industries. Other people won't be brutally honest about their solution. Give the user first. Try <coughs> not to be salesy. I can guarantee it. There'll be a small handful in your, any market that do it that way. Mm. Uh, thinking about the long term and building up that authority and trust. What would you say in a sales pitch? You'd they'd say, "Oh, we've been looking at competitor B and mm. competitor C." Yeah. You'd say, "Yeah, well, they are they are quite good at what yeah. they do. What, what being honest, what we do better is this." Yeah. Um, which I think is right for you. Yeah. And that that would be building that relationship. Why wouldn't you do that on yeah. on your website? Because that's all your blog is. It's. You, most people get this when you explain it to, to them. speak to them, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Prospects get it when you explain it to them and you go through it, they understand. They, the only resistance you ever get with blogging is time. Mm. Like, I get it. I do it. That's how I search. That's how I buy stuff. But can I wait nine, 12 months for mm. this to give me results? And that's the only pitfall I see in sales. And I get it. Everyone's got targets. Andrew and tweeted another graph today. Do you see? Yeah, saw that. He's he's got on his uh, blocks, uh, graphs on his blogs recently. But that's it. And you, you've just got to decide as a company: do we want long-term value, trust in the market, mm. best ROI? Yeah. Well, I'm prepared to wait a year for that. If not, stick your money on PPC and yeah. get what you can today. But or if you you're very lucky, do that in the meantime and build your business, inbound up. Which is, yeah, if you've got the budget, if definitely, you can. Definitely. So lastly, like, internal links, external links. Yeah. We've covered anchor links, give, uh, guiding people around the page, but link to your other content that's relevant. Yeah. Give the user a, a little ecosystem to, well, now we've touched on that, but do you want another full blog on this? Yeah. Click through. We do Good. it in the middle of a blog or wherever it's relevant. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, you've got the CTA at the bottom. Mm. External links. So it's not just us saying this. Yeah. It's this massive industry thought leader. Here's what he's had to say about it, yeah. or what they've published, or what, what she was saying on Twitter last week. Something like that. If you look at who's absolutely dominated Google the last 10 years is Wikipedia. Mm. Go on any Wikipedia page, it has links to the other relevant pages that and they that's have. That's just user content. It is. None of it's very fair. No, exactly. And then the bottom of it's got all our external links of sources and verification. Mm. So it's, yeah, look at that model if you, if you need to look yeah. for proof that it works. External linking. And um, some people are scared of that, but yeah. there's no need to be really, like a user's going to find that thing anyway if you're the one that points them there. I think great. we've said it before, if you don't 
give it them for free. They'll, They'll go away them. and find it for free anyway. Yeah, so. exactly. So you can't be scared about that. No. Um, if they, if you've got good stuff to read on, they'll come back and finish what they were doing. Mm. Um, or they'll see you another day and click on you. Oh, I like to open those in another window. Yeah, I do. Definitely. And I think a lot of people multi-tab now. The, the days of, I'm on a blog, I've clicked, I've gone, and oh, where did I start? I They're gone a little bit now. Logically, aren't. it's a link. Yeah, it's opened in another tab because I'm going on to another website. Yeah. If it's an internal link, I'd keep that yeah. same window. Yeah. Um, but anyway. yeah, everyone's got the rules, haven't yeah. <laughs> But that's my own user preference. Yeah. Maybe another podcast. New yeah. window or not. Yeah, that'd be a good one. And then obviously the final point is the CTA. The point of the blog is to drive them down the funnel. So if, the, if you're writing top of the content, uh, top of the funnel piece of content, drive them to the middle. If you do middle, drive them to the bottom. The big thing is that CTA has got to be relevant to what the blog. That's about. hard early on. It is really if you're hard. just starting blogging. You've only got one download piece. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be super relevant to no. every blog. Exactly. Which is why we. Brand new client, absolutely zero content. We start with something quite generic mm. that spans topics. But yeah, that is really hard to do. And the click through of those are going to be okay. Yeah. But it's really when you get into months, 12, two years in, whatever it is. It's a bit longer, yeah. yeah two years then onwards. you've got eight pieces. Most clients have got some stuff they've done prior to us. So they've done their own case studies yeah. or whatever it is. So when you've got that selection of five to 20 pieces and you can tailor it to each blog that's mm -hmm. where you're going to win big yeah definitely yeah. I think that was all our list awesome there'll be others I'm sure let us know yes definitely um, so I think that's covered everything offer value yeah be honest move them on in their journey and by helping them they'll, yeah. they'll be willing to let you take them through the buyer's journey and then yeah. eventually when, when that time comes you're in the mix for the decision yeah and you've You've converted them, you've been messaging them, Definitely. and you can hand over to the sales team then. Yeah. However you want to look at it long term, <coughs> Mark calls it the boomerang effect. Put good stuff out there, good stuff mm. will come back to you. And there's always going to be that unknown middle area of any marketing that you, it's untrackable sort of goodwill and mm. trust and authority that... Someone's read that blog and hasn't converted today, but next time you see you in the surface, you get that click-through rate. You're not going to be able to measure that. No. But... The, the, the correlations there. Two clients have said things um, that backed that up. Uh, I remember Kev saying, that's the beautiful thing about what you guys do. Yeah. I can't quantify that, but I know it works yeah. and I trust you. Yeah. And uh, Phil, another guy, just saying, the number's going up. I don't get it, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. As long as that happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a good way to think about it. And, and having your nerve and having the vision and ambition to do it for the long term and know that you'll get the results out mm. of it but yeah, yeah. there's some of the basics yeah awesome well thanks for listening to us too rambling on about yeah, blogs no enjoyed it it's been a bit of a different dynamic yeah. I've enjoyed let it. us know um, any other ideas that you think should be in an inbound blog yeah. um, thanks for listening throughout throughout this year which yeah. is, like I said just before Christmas for us so yeah. this will be going live start of 2018 yeah hope you've had a good Christmas break nice and refreshed yeah. start the new year Awesome. And uh, yeah, speak to you soon. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye.